The truth about Anthony Joshua. Next. Please like and subscribe. Help us hit 10,000 subscribers. Share on all forms of social media. Please leave us a comment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Tuesday Night Fights. Boy, is there a lot to get into. A lot going on with Anthony Joshua. Rumors are flying all over the place. He had a panic attack. He got knocked out in sparring by Joey Dwarko. And his dad wanted him to pull out of the fight. They're going to have a rematch in Mexico. AJ's not going to take a rematch. Let's take a look at some of this. Um, let's take a look at first at what we know. Here's, here's what we know. Anthony Joshua is the former unified heavyweight champion of the world. And he got destroyed by the destroyer. By a fringe contender, Andy Ruiz. Who is a heck of a lot better than, than y'all and me all thought. That's for sure. Uh, he, was, he wasn't caught cold. Ruiz didn't catch lightning in a bottle. He hurt AJ in the third and outboxed him badly until finishing him in the seventh. He was knocked down a total of four times and, and was out of his league from the midpoint of the third round on. I mean, let's be real. He was out boxing. Um, every round from the middle of the third on, since, since after Ruiz got, to the seat of his got up off the seat of his pants and to his feet, he outboxed AJ. Clearly outboxed him. At points, about boxing him badly. That's what we know. Okay? Everything I said there is what we know. Here's what I think. AJ is going to have an incredibly difficult time getting back to the top of the mountain. That's for sure. The heavyweight division is really shaping up. And, and he would have fits with any of the guys near the top. He couldn't handle the speed of Andy Ruiz. Could you imagine what the speed of speed and, and, and movement of Usyk would do to him? I mean, forget about it. Fury would, would, would outbox him so badly. Um, you, you're telling me Wilder wouldn't connect on that sloppy defense? That hole-filled, messy defense of, of Anthony Joshua? I mean, he couldn't get out of the way of Ariza's shots. Wilder, it only takes one. You know, Wilder says, and he, and he says it so well, they need to be perfect for all 12 rounds. I only need to be perfect for two seconds, meaning he only needs to land one shot. You're telling me he wouldn't connect with that right hand on Anthony Joshua's messy defense? Of course he would. He's going to have a problem with all these guys. Um, Wilder would, would nail him. Usyk would just give him fits. I mean, that would be one-sided and sloppy. Um, and Fury would, would outbox him badly, too. I think Fury might stop him, too. Um... He made Anthony Joshua, and we need to prepare ourselves for this. Now, I, I don't want to compare him to Adrian Broner, um, but Adrian Broner will not be a, a, a legitimate world champion again. And, and we may have to prepare ourselves for the fact that Anthony Joshua will never be heavyweight champ again. First off, <clears throat> him getting a title shot, if he doesn't take the rematch, is going to be difficult. All titles are over with the PBC side now. Okay? On your side of the street, you can't beat Usyk. And then you can't be uh, Fury will get a belt. You can't beat him. So first off, getting a title shot for Anthony Joshua in the foreseeable future isn't going to be easy. You think Al Heyman and PBC Machine is chomping at the bit to work with you after what you and Eddie did to them? Oh, I don't think so. I don't, unless you want to take such low B-side status where they, but you're not going to do that. So you may not get a title shot anytime soon. First of all, you're getting a, it mean, if you don't take the rematch with Ruiz, and I don't think you should because you can't beat him, not as presently constituted. Um, you're not on the right side of the street, and you can't beat Ruiz. First of all, uh, Luis Ortiz, Quinaki, Fury. Dillian White, Pulev, will all get title shots before Anthony Joshua, if Anthony Joshua doesn't take the rematch, which he shouldn't, okay? Because he's not going to win. And then, then, then there's real problems. He can't beat Andy Ruiz, not unless he makes major wholesale changes. 
You saw all those guys, Pulev, White, Ortiz, Kwanaki, they're all getting time. Pulev, Pulev's going to get his mandatory calls. Uh, White's going to get his mandatory calls. Fury's going to get a shot, a shot with Wilder. Uh, and they'll have Fury fight Ortiz and Kwanaki, and then uh, uh, Ortiz is fighting Wilder. So they'll have Kwanaki fight Ruiz, and they'll, they'll keep it on the PBC side like they do. Do you see Terrence Crawford getting a shot? Terrence Crawford's the best fighter in the world. Do you see Al Heyman throwing Terrence Crawford in the ring? With Errol Spencer, Keith Thurman, and Sterling Porter? No. No. He's not going to just throw you in the ring with one of his guys and potentially lose a hold of the heavyweight division. That ain't going to happen. He thought Andy Ruiz was no risk. Neither did I. Neither did anybody. Well, he was wrong. We were all dead wrong. Andy Ruiz is really good. <laughs> okay? Uh, that was a very impressive performance. And, and look. It wasn't as if Ruiz fought out of his mind. That Ruiz gave a Buster Douglas performance that he could never replicate again. Or he just got caught a lightning in a bottle and he landed the perfect shot. You know, that's not what happened. He didn't just catch some cold. Right? He, he didn't just fight incredibly well like he can't do that. Like, you know, we were talking about Jamel Herring. I don't think Herring can fight that well again. We'll see. I, don't, I, I thought he fought the fight of his life on his biggest stage, right? Um... J-Rock. I don't think J-Rock could duplicate that performance against uh, against Hurd. I don't. They fought the fight of their lives on a big on the biggest stage of their lives. So kudos to them. But they ain't going to do it again. Andy Ruiz just fought his fight. Andy Ruiz just did his thing. He wasn't you no know, special night. It wasn't like the stars aligned for Andy Ruiz and he gave the best performance of his life. Go watch Andy Ruiz's performance. This is how he fights. And it's better than, 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 than Anthony Joshua. Look, he's more powerful than Anthony. He, he, he punches harder than Joshua. Okay? He's faster than Joshua. His combinations are better than Joshua. His footwork is better than... He's better than Joshua. That's just the way it is. Now, that doesn't mean Joshua can't win. Right? Uh, Ruiz acknowledged that Joshua has really good power. Okay? And Joshua had him hurt. Joshua had him on the, on, on the ground. So, I'm not saying it's impossible for Joshua, but if I was betting, if I was a betting man, if this rematch were to happen next, November, like they're talking about, I would pick Andy Ruiz. And I, I don't see an argument for how you'd pick Joshua. He could catch him. And I, I want to talk about this. I got into a big debate a while back with, with Matt Hunter, uh, Mixed Combat Radio. Uh, Mixed, Mixed Combat Radio, he's got an awesome podcast. Check it out. MCR. Uh, but I, I was saying that the heavyweights, even the ones like Joe Dwarka, which we'll get into, who don't have this... Sh pristine, shiny knockout percentage, still have power and still and can still knock you out and can still change the fight with any one punch um, at any time. A and they do, right? So Joshua could knock out uh, Ruiz. It could happen. I just wouldn't bet on it. Ruiz is better. I'd pick Ruiz. Ruiz is better. Ruiz hits harder. I'd pick Ruiz. Now, that doesn't mean Joshua can't land that shot. Of course he can. But... He can't have box Andy Ruiz. We need to we need to accept that. When was the last time really Anthony Joshua impressed you? Yeah, the Pavekin. Okay, good. Besides that though, did he impress you against Parker? No. Did he impress you against Carlos Takam? No. Did he impress you when he almost got knocked out by a 41-year-old Vlad Klitschko who's coming off getting schooled by Tyson Fury and a two-year layoff? Was that impressive? No, you better not say that was impressive. That was not impressive. That was his first step backwards, and he hasn't really impressed since then. So, like, there's this kind of, when did he impress you? Charles Martin and Povetkin. Okay? You know, it's, it's not, his resume is not great. Um... It's good. He's got a good resume. He's got, he's got he beat good names, but it's not like he's looked super impressive against these guys. This should, in retrospect, hindsight, we should have saw this coming. In reality, uh, Anthony Joshua's got a lot to work on. Let's get into the rumors, though. Did he have a panic attack? I don't know. You know, uh, I, I wanted to give my personal story. Um, I have epilepsy. I have seizures. Uh, they were originally diagnosed as panic attacks. Uh, my seizures, my epilepsy, it's called post-traumatic epilepsy, which means it's caused from trauma to the head, from years of boxing. They originally diagnosed it as panic attacks, because all the symptoms were the same. I just had three kids, work, they thought it was panic attacks. 
made sense. They gave me a bunch of medicines, antidepressants, uh, you know, Zoloft, things like that. It didn't stop the seizures at all. So they realized it wasn't uh, panic attacks. They sent me in to a neurologist who diagnosed me with epilepsy from trauma, from head shots, from shots to the head. <clears throat> that could be what Anthony Joshua has. I'm not a doctor, so don't take my word for it. I'm just saying, I was diagnosed with, with panic attacks, and it wasn't panic attacks. It was seizures, all, but all the symptoms were the same. Um, it could be that. Or it could be panic attacks, which is, does not make him a weak person. Or you, you have to understand that panic attacks is a neurological disorder. It doesn't mean he's a sissy or, or anything like that. He's in a sport where he gets punched in the head. There could be neural logical impacts that cause panic attacks, right? Like, blows to the head, head trauma can cause these things. They can cause neurological irregularities, which this may be. So maybe he does have panic attacks. So that could be something that can be treated. Or maybe it has nothing to do with it. Maybe it's, I, I don't know, right? But something, may, something probably happened. And I want to get into Joey Dwarko, too. Uh... His dad came out and said Joey Duarco knocked him out. You know, do I think Duarco knocked him out face down? You know, no. Do I think he, you know, Marquez, you know, knocked him out like Marquez did to Pacquiao? No. Do I think Duarco dropped him? You know, Joshua got up. The cracker or whoever looked at Anthony Joshua said, that's enough. No more sparring today. You, you get yourself together. You got to fight in a week or 10 days, whatever it was. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's probably what happened. You know, Duarco probably... And again, heavyweights can crack. Anthony's defense is sloppy, so why does it surprise people that a, a 250-pound legit... Duarco's not a top 10 no, guy or a top 20 guy, but Duarco's a skilled fighter, and he hit you with a big shot, and you went down. Why would that surprise anyone? Joshua's defense was clearly sloppy, so I, I don't see why that would surprise anyone. Heavyweights can crack. All of them. You're 250 pounds and a professional world-class fighter, you can crack. That's it. So, yeah, that, that probably happened. Will they take a rematch? Well, the, you know, Andy Ruiz wants it in Mexico now, um, and, and Joshua wants it in the UK. I guess the, the, the promoters, lawyers, whatever, they're going to figure that out. Anthony Joshua should not take the rematch because he can't win it. Not now. He needs to go back to the drawing board. He has so much he needs to work on. He needs to develop a jab. He's 6'6". He's got an 82-inch reach. He needs to be able to keep people at bay with the jab. He needs to work on his on, on his defensive ability. He gets hit way too much. He, he's not a, you know, he's a stationary target. He's got to work on his defense. He's got to work on his movement. And he's got to develop a way to deliver that right hand. Obviously, there's a ton of power in the right hand. He needs to set up angles. I mean... And learn how to throw that right hand and land it from different angles. He needs Emmanuel Stewart. God rest his soul. He's not with us anymore. I mean, Emmanuel Stewart could save this ship. I, I don't know where he goes from here. But if he goes back into a title shot with Andy Ruiz, he's going to lose again. I'm just letting you guys know that. I mean, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, let me know what you think uh, Joshua should do next. Uh, should he take the rematch? Should he go back to the drawing board and rebuild and not rush into a rematch? Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like and subscribe. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Please share this on all forms of social media. For another episode of Tuesday Night Fights, from Texas to the world, this is 3D Boxing saying thank you and God bless. Enjoy 3D Boxing vlog videos? Show us some love by clicking the like button. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3dboxingblog.com is also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.